The legacy of Walter Brennan, a prominent figure in the 1930s, continues to capture media attention even after his passing nearly five decades ago. Renowned for winning an Oscar as Best Supporting Actor, Brennan remains cherished by Hollywood television viewers for his remarkable performances in movies like Come and Get It, Kentucky, and The Westerner. However, nothing will happen until his children reveal the whole truth about him. If you don't know about these facts, watch this video until the end. William Joyce Brennan, widely known as Brennan, entered the world on July 25, 1894, in Lynn, Massachusetts, a stone's throw away from his family's residence in Swampscott, Massachusetts. His roots are traced back to Irish immigrants who infused his upbringing with a rich cultural heritage. Born to an inventive and engineering-minded father, Brennan's early exposure to these fields would significantly shape his future. The path of engineering unfolded before Brennan as he pursued education at Ringe Technical High School in Cambridge, Massachusetts. His father's influence and his own curiosity led him to delve into the intricacies of engineering, setting the stage for his later ventures. However, destiny had a different plan for the young Brennan. As fate would have it, Brennan found himself working as a bank clerk when the call of duty beckoned during World War I. Displaying valor and commitment, he enlisted in the U.S. Army and took up the role of a private within the 101st Field Artillery Regiment, serving in the trenches of France. This pivotal chapter in his life unfolded over two years, leaving an indelible mark on Brennan, both physically and vocally. Tragically, Brennan suffered an injury to his vocal cords due to exposure to mustard gas during his time in France. This injury would go on to define his on-screen persona, a uniquely reedy, high-pitched voice that became his trademark. Little did he know that this distinctive vocal quality would resonate through the decades, making him a favorite subject for celebrity impersonators. Post-World War I, Brennan transitioned into the realm of journalism working as a financial reporter for a prominent newspaper in Boston. However, his journey didn't stop there. The 1920s beckoned with promise and potential riches, leading Brennan into the world of real estate. Riding the wave of the booming market, he amassed a fortune, embodying the spirit of the era's economic prosperity. Yet the tides of fortune can be fickle, and Brennan experienced the harsh reality of financial volatility. The 1925 real estate slump proved to be a formidable adversary, stripping him of most of his hard-earned wealth. This setback, though significant, would not define Brennan. His resilience and determination paved the way for the next chapters in his remarkable life as he continued to navigate the unpredictable currents of the early 20th century. In the wake of financial adversity and the aftermath of the 1925 real estate slump, Brennan found himself at a crossroads. Struggling with the harsh realities of economic downturns, he sought new avenues to rebuild his life. Fate led him to the burgeoning world of Hollywood, where he embarked on a career that would cement his legacy. In 1925, Brennan took the plunge into the film industry, initially securing roles as an extra at Universal Studios. The pay, starting at $7.50 a day, equivalent to 125 sous in 2022, offered a lifeline for the penniless Brennan. Little did he know that this entry into the world of cinema would mark the beginning of a decade-long association with Universal Studios, becoming a pivotal chapter in his professional journey. Brennan's tenacious spirit and commitment to his craft propelled him through the ranks at Universal. Despite starting as an extra, his talent and work ethic ensured a steady stream of roles over the years. This period of consistent engagement with Universal Studios became a cornerstone of Brennan's early career, laying the groundwork for the recognition that would follow. However, fate had more in store for Brennan than just routine extra roles. In a twist of fortune that he would later describe as the luckiest break in the world, Brennan found himself in a fight scene that would alter the course of his on-screen persona. 
During this intense sequence, an actor inadvertently kicks Brennan in the face, resulting in the loss of all his teeth. Seizing the opportunity, Brennan embraced this physical transformation, opting for false teeth. This decision, while practical for day-to-day -day life, became a creative asset in his acting career. He remarked, I looked all right off the set, but when necessary, I could take them out and suddenly look about 40 years older. This distinctive feature would later become an integral part of his versatility as an actor. As Brennan navigated the Hollywood landscape, he left an indelible mark with appearances in notable productions. Notably, he featured in a Three Stooges short titled Restless Nights and a short film titled Hunger Pains in 1935. These early roles showcased Brennan's adaptability and comedic prowess, foreshadowing the multifaceted career that lay ahead. William Joyce. Brennan's ascent in Hollywood took a significant leap forward when he secured a breakthrough role in The Wedding Night, 1935, a production helmed by the renowned film producer Sam Goldwyn. In this cinematic venture, Brennan found himself sharing the screen with none other than the legendary Gary Cooper, a collaboration that marked their second film together. While initially cast as an extra, Brennan's undeniable talent caught the attention of the filmmakers, leading to the expansion of his role during the course of filming. This pivotal turn of events proved to be the turning point for Brennan, as his standout performance in The Wedding Night not only garnered attention, but also earned him a coveted contract with Sam Goldwyn. The doors of opportunity swung wide open for Brennan, and his journey in the world of cinema took a promising trajectory. Under the patronage of Sam Goldwyn, Brennan's cinematic journey extended beyond the confines of a single studio. Goldwyn strategically loaned out Brennan's services to other major studios, showcasing the actor's versatility across various productions. One notable project during this period was MGM's West Point of the Air, 1935, where Brennan brought his distinctive charm to the screen in a role that further solidified his growing reputation in Hollywood. Brennan's artistic collaboration with director James Whale continued with the iconic Bride of Frankenstein, 1935. In this cinematic masterpiece, Brennan not only had a brief speaking part but also showcased his physical prowess as a stuntman, a testament to his dedication to his craft. The film, a sequel to the classic Frankenstein, added another layer to Brennan's diverse portfolio. The year 1935 witnessed Brennan's presence in a range of films, showcasing his versatility across genres. From the comedic allure of We're in the Money to the dramatic flair of She Couldn't Take It, Brennan's performances resonated with audiences and critics alike. These varied roles highlighted his ability to seamlessly transition between comedic and dramatic elements, solidifying his status as a versatile actor. William Joyce Brennan's career trajectory gained significant momentum with pivotal roles that showcased his acting prowess and versatility. His breakthrough came with a notable part in Sam Goldwyn's Barbary Coast, 1935, a film directed by the esteemed Howard Hawks and an uncredited William Wyler. Brennan's involvement in this production marked a turning point in his career, providing him with the opportunity to move beyond supporting roles. Reflecting on this period, Brennan later remarked, That really set me up, underscoring the significance of this opportunity in shaping his Hollywood journey. Following the success of Barbary Coast, Brennan continued to make his mark in the industry with a string of diverse roles. His filmography for the year 1935 included appearances in Metropolitan and Seven Keys to Bald Pate, where even in smaller roles, Brennan's distinctive presence left a lasting impact. In 1936, Brennan's career soared to new heights as he secured a leading role in Three Godfathers, portraying one of the title outlaws. This marked a significant milestone for Brennan, allowing him to showcase his range and depth as an actor. The film further solidified his standing in the industry and set the stage for a series of memorable performances. Collaborating with director William Wyler once again, Brennan had a small role in these three. 
1936. Additionally, he played a more substantial part in Walter Wanger's The Moon's Our Home, 1936, demonstrating his ability to seamlessly transition between different genres and roles. Another noteworthy entry in Brennan's filmography for 1936 was Fury, directed by the iconic Fritz Lang. In this gripping drama, Brennan delivered a compelling performance that underscored his capacity to engage audiences with both emotional depth and authenticity. William Joyce Brennan's ascent in Hollywood reached new heights with a breakthrough role that would not only define his career, but also earn him the first Academy Award for Best Supporting Actor. This pivotal moment occurred when Howard Hawks cast him as Swan Bostrom in the period film Come and Get It, 1936. In this cinematic venture, Brennan played the sidekick of Edward Arnold, ultimately marrying the character played by Francis Farmer, whom Arnold's character abandons. The production, however, faced a significant upheaval when producer Sam Goldwyn dismissed Howard Hawks during filming, replacing him with the esteemed William Wyler. Brennan's performance in Come and Get It showcased his remarkable talent capturing the attention of both audiences and critics. The film not only marked a turning point in Brennan's career, but also secured his place in Hollywood history. His portrayal of Swan Bostrom earned him the first Academy Award for Best Supporting Actor, an accolade that solidified his standing as a formidable talent in the industry. Following his success with The Real McCoys, Walter Brennan ventured into the realm of music leaving an indelible mark with several noteworthy recordings. Among these, the most popular and enduring was Old Rivers, a poignant song that narrates the tale of an old farmer and his mule. Released as a single in 1962 by Liberty Records, the flip side featured the epic ride of John H. Glenn. This musical endeavor would prove to be a milestone in Brennan's career, showcasing his versatility not only as an actor but also as a recording artist. Old Rivers resonated with audiences and swiftly climbed the charts, reaching an impressive Mo5 on the U.S. Billboard chart. What made this achievement even more remarkable was Brennan's age at the time, 67 years old. This success earned him the distinction of being the oldest living person to have a top 40 hit, a testament to the timeless appeal of his talents and the universal resonance of his storytelling. Undeterred by conventional expectations, Brennan continued to defy age-related stereotypes. At the age of 68, he once again graced the top 40 with another musical accomplishment. On November 17, 1962, Mama Sang a Song made its mark on the charts, further solidifying Brennan's status as a multi-talented entertainer. In addition to his musical pursuits, Brennan's post-Real McCoy's era saw him contributing his distinctive voice to a cartoon rendition of The Shooting of Dan McGrew. This venture added yet another layer to Brennan's legacy, showcasing his ability to captivate audiences, not only through on-screen performances, but also through the animated realm. Walter Brennan continued to make significant contributions to the entertainment industry in the later years of his career, showcasing his enduring talent across various projects. In the late 1960s, Brennan received top billing in the TV movie The Over the Hill Gang, 1969, where he shared the screen with Pat O'Brien. This marked a memorable collaboration that demonstrated Brennan's continued prominence in the industry. The success of this endeavor was followed by a sequel, The Over the Hill Gang Rides Again, 1970, in which Brennan took top billing alongside the legendary Fred Astaire. These television movies not only showcased Brennan's acting prowess, but also emphasized his ability to hold his own alongside esteemed co-stars. Brennan further expanded his television presence by joining the second season of the CBS sitcom To Roam With Love, 1969-1971, where he worked alongside John Forsyth. While this marked Brennan's last television series as a permanent cast member, his impact continued as he made guest appearances on shows like Alias Smith and Jones. Simultaneously, Brennan continued to leave his mark on television movies, starring in productions such as The Young Country, 1970, 
Two for the Money, 1972, and Home for the Holidays, 1972. These projects showcased his versatility and ability to seamlessly transition between different genres. While Brennan was announced for a Western titled One Day in Eden, the project did not come to fruition. Despite this, he remained actively engaged in the industry, embarking on the filming of Herbie Rides Again, 1973, for Disney. Unfortunately, Brennan fell ill during the production and had to be replaced, marking a poignant moment in his career. In the later years of his career, Brennan's last screen appearance occurred in the western Smoke in the Wind, 1975, directed by Joseph Kane. This final project served as a fitting conclusion to a remarkable career that spanned decades, leaving an indelible legacy in both film and television. Walter Brennan's personal life was marked by enduring commitment and a deep connection to the land. In 1920, he entered into a union with Ruth Caroline Wells, and their marriage spanned an impressive 54 years. Together, they welcomed three children into their family, Arthur, Walter, and Ruth, forming a close-knit bond that endured throughout Brennan's illustrious career. In 1940, Brennan made a significant and lasting investment in the 12,000-acre Lightning Creek Ranch, situated 20 miles north of Joseph, Oregon. This vast expanse of land became more than a retreat. It became a testament to Brennan's affinity for nature and a respite from the demands of his Hollywood career. As a testament to his commitment to the local community, Brennan also played a role in the development of Joseph. Here, he established the Indian Lodge Motel, a movie theater, and a variety store, contributing to the town's cultural and commercial landscape. Amidst the glitz and glamour of Hollywood, Brennan found solace in the rugged beauty of Lightning Creek Ranch. This became a cherished haven where he could recharge between film roles, maintaining a genuine connection to the simplicity and tranquility of rural life. Even as his career soared, Brennan's heart remained rooted in the earth, reflecting a unique balance between the glamour of Hollywood and the authenticity of rural America. In his later years, Brennan spent the majority of his retirement at his ranch in Moore Park, situated in Ventura County, California. This final chapter of his life saw him surrounded by the natural beauty he cherished, providing a peaceful backdrop for reflection and relaxation. It was during this period that Brennan, a Hollywood icon, transitioned into the role of a rancher, enjoying a slower pace and the serenity of rural living. Tragically, Walter Brennan's life came to an end on September 21, 1974, as he succumbed to emphysema at the age of 80 in Oxnard, California. Despite the challenges posed by his illness, Brennan's legacy remained intact, a testament to his enduring impact on the world of entertainment. In accordance with his wishes, Brennan's remains found their resting place at the San Fernando Mission Cemetery in Los Angeles. This final act honored a man whose life had spanned the realms of Hollywood stardom and rural tranquility, leaving an indelible mark on both landscapes. Walter Brennan's personal beliefs and political views added layers to the complex tapestry of his life. Despite being a Roman Catholic, Brennan maintained a private stance on his religious affiliation. In 1964, however, he publicly acknowledged his faith, stating, I'm too old not to be a religious fella. It appears we are losing something a lot of people made a lot of sacrifices for. This declaration hinted at his deepening spiritual convictions and the belief in the importance of preserving values in a changing world. During the same year, Brennan took a public stand on a different matter by speaking at Project Prayer, a rally held at the Shrine Auditorium in Los Angeles. This event, hosted by Anthony Isley, aimed to rally support for school prayer following Supreme Court decisions in 1962 and 1963 that had invalidated mandatory prayer in public schools. The court had ruled that such practices conflicted with the Establishment Clause of the First Amendment to the United States Constitution. 
Brennan's participation in this rally showcased his concern for the perceived erosion of moral and religious values in society. While Brennan's religious beliefs and advocacy for prayer in schools painted a picture of his conservative values, his political views took a more controversial turn. According to his biographer Carl Rollison, Brennan was fiercely opposed to communism and reportedly labeled people as communists if they supported John F. Kennedy. Rollison further revealed Brennan's extreme stance, claiming that Brennan believed the Watts riots could have been stopped with a machine gun. Brennan's home reportedly included a bunker stocked with weapons and food, reflecting his anticipation of a potential Soviet invasion, an indication of the anxieties and fears prevalent during the Cold War era. Perhaps the most shocking aspects of Brennan's political views were his reported expressions of satisfaction at the murder of the Reverend Martin Luther King Jr. and his rejoicing in the assassination of Robert F. Kennedy. These statements, if accurate, stand in stark contrast to Brennan's public image as a beloved character actor. Additional insights into Brennan's character came from Everett Greenbaum, a writer of 32 episodes of The Real McCoys, who described Brennan as a bigot prone to frequently uttering racist remarks. These revelations provide a more nuanced understanding of the man behind the iconic Hollywood persona. Walter Brennan's political affiliations and activities were as diverse and complex as his on-screen characters. A staunch conservative Republican, Brennan aligned himself with the Motion Picture Alliance for the Preservation of American Ideals, a group formed to counter perceived leftist influences in the entertainment industry. This affiliation reflected his commitment to conservative values and opposition to what he perceived as liberal or communist ideologies. In the 1964 United States presidential election, Brennan threw his support behind Barry Goldwater. Goldwater's opposition to the Civil Rights Act of 1964 resonated with Brennan's conservative stance. However, Brennan's political alliances evolved over time, showcasing his nuanced and independent views. In 1968, he endorsed George Wallace for president, viewing Richard Nixon as too liberal within the Republican Party. Wallace, a staunch segregationist and third-party candidate, attracted support from individuals who resisted what they perceived as federal overreach in civil rights legislation. Brennan's political journey took another turn in 1972 when he endorsed John Schmitz, a far-right candidate and fellow member of the John Birch Society, an organization known for its anti-communist and conservative views. Brennan not only endorsed Schmitz, but also served as the finance chairman and narrated ads in support of Schmitz's campaign. This alliance demonstrated Brennan's alignment with candidates who embraced far-right ideologies and shared his concerns about perceived threats to conservative values. Despite these endorsements, Brennan was not exclusively tied to far-right candidates. In the 1966 California gubernatorial election, and again in the 1970 re-election, he endorsed Ronald Reagan. Reagan, who would later become the 40th president of the United States, embodied a more mainstream conservative ideology, aligning with Brennan's political convictions. Walter Brennan stands tall among the pantheon of character actors, earning widespread acclaim from film historians and critics who recognize him as one of the finest in motion picture history. His remarkable career spanned nearly five decades, during which he portrayed a diverse array of characters, leaving an indelible mark on the cinematic landscape. While Brennan showcased his versatility across various genres, it is in Western films that his performances resonated most deeply with audiences. Among his unforgettable Western roles, Brennan is fondly remembered as Judge Roy Bean in The Westerner, trailhand Nadine Groot in Red River, and Deputy Stumpy in Rio Bravo. These characters not only demonstrated Brennan's acting prowess, but also contributed to the enduring legacy of Western cinema. Brennan's cinematic achievements include being the first actor to win three Academy Awards, a feat that remains unmatched to this day. He secured Best Supporting Actor honors for his roles in Come and Get It, 
1936, Kentucky, 1938, and The Westerner, 1940. However, Brennan in later years expressed some embarrassment about the manner in which he won these awards. During the early years of the Academy Awards, extras were eligible to vote, and Brennan, being popular with the extras' union, benefited from their support. Following his third win, the rules were amended to disenfranchise the union from Oscar voting. Despite this, Brennan's impact on the industry remained unassailable. The zenith of Brennan's career also came with some setbacks. In 1941, following the rule changes, he lost his fourth Best Supporting Actor nomination for Sergeant York to Donald Crisp for How Green Was My Valley. Nevertheless, Brennan's resilience and continued contributions to film and television solidified his status as a legendary figure in the entertainment world. His prolific career included more than 230 film and television roles, each showcasing his remarkable ability to bring characters to life with authenticity and depth. In recognition of his outstanding contributions, Brennan was honored with a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame at 6501 Hollywood Boulevard, a testament to his enduring impact on the film industry. In 1970, Walter Brennan's legacy was further enshrined when he was inducted into the Hall of Great Western Performers at the National Cowboy and Western Heritage Museum in Oklahoma City. His photograph now hangs prominently a tribute to his enduring influence on Western cinema. What do you think about Walter Brennan's life? Leave us your comments in the section below. We hope you have found this helpful video. Don't forget to leave a like, share, and subscribe to the channel if you like it. Thank you for watching this and see you in the next videos. Goodbye.